Tasha Paytas. Okay, right, so we're gonna bring out our next guest. She is a YouTube sensation with over one billion views. Everyone, please welcome Trisha Paytas. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> I am stepping back from a persona, from a person that is Trish, Trisha Paytas. I woke up this morning feeling like a chicken nugget. I am a transgender female to male, but also like a drag queen. I'm crazy, you're crazy too, like get over it. <laughs> None of it felt right. This video features Trisha Paytas being Trisha Paytas and other offensive and maybe triggering things and acts. Viewer discretion is advised. Clips and audio are slightly altered to avoid false copyright claims. Enjoy the video. You call me money hungry and it's like literally all you do is just obsess over money. You're kind of the worst, but that's okay. You guys are such bullshit. You guys are so fake and it's like, like actually annoying. Like retardation, not to be mean. Wait, you just called her retarded. I am so sick of people using mental health as an excuse to be like a shit person or not know what's going on in the world because I have a lot of mental health problems and I know not to lie about people, not to be delusional, not to accuse people of stuff that they didn't do. Trisha Paytas, YouTube's biggest liar. Trisha Paytas is an internet personality that has confused their viewers for years. From endless contradictions and lies. Why do you lie about shit? To outrageous statements. We don't actually need gravity. What if it was never invented? Trisha Paytas exemplifies the saying, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. And the story of Trisha Paytas is like the story of the boy who cried wolf. Trisha Paytas's entire history on the internet is filled with so many lies and tall tales that their audience no longer believes anything they say. And no one knows what the real truth is or who the real Trisha Paytas is. So let's talk about the twisted world of Trisha Paytas and the many lies and scams that have led to their success and subsequently their downfall. Hey, what's up? This is Trisha. I'm super fun. So you probably have many towns. Hey, Trisha here. Hello, friends and internet acquaintances. Welcome to another video on my channel covering the wheel. Covering the weird world of influencers and influencer scams. And today's video is yet another huge video project. I do not know why I continue to do this to myself. It seems like every single video I come out with gets longer and longer with more and more research and resources, but I'm having fun with it and I hope that you're having fun watching. And if you are having fun watching, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to and also give this video a thumbs up if you like it and you want to. And today's video topic is the twisted world of Trisha Paytas or Trisha Paytas, YouTube's biggest liar. But before we get into this video, I have some really exciting news. This video is sponsored by an amazing company who I thought would be the perfect sponsorship for this video. Adam and Eve. I think if you know Trisha Paytas, you know that I had to do a sponsorship with Adam and Eve. It's just the perfect sponsorship for this video. And thank you so much to Adam and Eve for sponsoring this video. It's Adam and Eve's 50th anniversary this year, which is amazing and goes to show they're a reliable company that has been bringing joy to many adults for quite some time. I'm also very thankful to them for sponsoring this video, considering this video is very likely to get either demonetized or copyright claimed. So if you want to help the channel out, considering the possible monetization issues on this video, 
yikes, or just want to get yourself or a loved one something nice for the holidays, you can use my code CRUEL for 50% off one item at adamandeve.com and free shipping in the US and Canada. Some exclusions apply. 20% of Adam and Eve's profits go towards fighting the spread of HIV around the world, which I think is pretty cool. So again, thank you so much to Adam and Eve for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much to everyone who checks out their online store and uses my code. And back to the video. Trisha Paytas is a well-known grifter who has been on YouTube and the internet in general for a really long time and has participated in pretty much everything that you could possibly do on social media. Do an extreme Trisha tradition because then you could do the Botox injections, drugs, raves, and boyfriends, like all of it. That'd be like the extreme. And then you would literally be crying at the end of the video. Like you would have a break. Like you, I would break you. That'd be everything. Trisha Paytas has participated in some scams, but the life of Trisha Paytas is also just a really interesting one. So I thought in today's video, I'd kind of mix it up and go into the very complicated life and history of Trisha Paytas and their time on the internet, as well as cover some of the shady businesses and scams that they've participated in. So first in this video, I'm going to be covering Trisha Paytas and their time in the spotlight and how how they rose to social media influencer fame and stardom. And then I'm going to be covering some of their shady businesses and questionable business decisions that gained them all the wealth that they have today. Because you kind of can't have one without the other when it comes to influencers. You have to have power and influence in order to promote shady businesses. But also a lot of influencers make most of their wealth through the shady businesses that they promote. So they're kind of symbiotic in a way. I want to put out a quick disclaimer. This video is not meant to villainize anyone or talk about every single wrong thing they've ever done ever. These types of videos on my channel are simply for educational purposes to help educate more people on the dangers of scams and the power of influencers. Mainly, I just want to help more people learn how to avoid scams and social media charlatans. Today's video subject, Trisha Paytas, is someone who has done whatever it takes to gain fame and attention no matter who they hurt along the way. No matter how many friends you lose or people you leave dead and bloody along the way. Yeah, I don't care about legacy or anything. That's all I care about. Really? Mm -hmm. And they have hurt a lot of people. The past two months has been hell. All the hate messages and the bashing. But none of you even know who I am. I've always been there for Trisha Paytas, day one. I was really hurt. I was mortified in front of thousands of people. I was made fun of. I don't even know why. I don't know what I did to deserve this. This hurt a lot more. What I went through with Trisha, but I'm so sick of people asking all these years later. I'm gonna be real. She's a liar and she's manipulative. I'm just gonna say, Trisha Paytas, like you have your own problems. Please stop worrying about mine. Please stop talking about me. You're not a very nice person. This is a person who I considered, you know, family, a close friend, someone I trusted. I really feel like she tried to ruin my life. It's just so bullshit. You guys are such bullshit. You guys are so fake and it's like, like actually annoying. But the Trisha Paytas that's presented online is all a facade, an illusion like the Wizard of Oz. But who is behind the curtain? or the camera. That's what we're gonna analyze today. I do think it's important to mention that Trisha Paytas identifies as non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. So I'll be respecting that today and using they, them pronouns. Though many feel Trisha Paytas being non-binary is another troll or lie. And after all the research I've done for this video, I can totally understand why. It's not really my place to say. I wanted to abide by Trisha Paytas's pronouns, mainly so other non-binary individuals watch this video know that they are valid and respected. Trisha Paytas has also publicly spoken about their mental health. Um, I also was recently diagnosed twice um, as schizophrenic this year, 2021. I'm on medication for it. And while I do think that mental health is an important factor to consider in one's actions, I also don't think it excuses anyone's actions, as Trisha Paytas themselves has also pointed out. I'm so sick of people using mental health as an excuse to be like a shit person or not know what's going on in the world because I have a lot of mental health problems and I know not to lie about people, not to be delusional, not to accuse people of stuff that they didn't do, not to say someone wasn't essayed or whatever. So for those of you who don't know who Trisha Paytas is and have been very alarmed by what they've seen so far, let's talk about it. 
Who is Trisha Paytas? And why is there a change.org petition calling to remove them from the internet with over 100,000 signatures? Well, Trisha Paytas is a YouTuber. Hey, what's up? This is Trisha. I'm super fun, super bubbly, have many talents, but one hidden talent. I'm a rapper. All right, stop. A reality TV star. A Darman impersonator. Don't scam anyone. Scammers never win and the truth will always prevail. An author. This is something you would write or even read as like a 14 year old whose first boyfriend had broken up with her, you know? An internet personality. Hi guys. And I open, I open. Guys, Most known for their YouTube channel and interesting YouTube videos. As someone who's been on YouTube longer than all y'all, because I keep saying like, I've been on longer than you and blah, blah, blah. Like, I've been on longer than all you all. So how did Trisha Paytas become this internet anomaly, an infamous internet personality? In order to understand how Trisha Paytas got here, we have to look at where they came from. <laughs> Hollywood. It's the land of the self-absorbed very like narcissistic the starlets the comedians the wannabes a lot of people have compared me to gaga some say i was the original gaga <laughs> the lovers of drama drugs and endless glory a place like hollywood is meant for a person like trisha paytas Trisha Paytas grew up in Illinois, but from an early age had big dreams and tall tales. I remember developing my love for entertainment and acting, or as my mom referred to it, as lying. And what little child wouldn't dream big when their childhood is far from perfect? From their dad leaving them at a young age. My dad decided to stay in California, which is um, where my abandonment issues, I guess, began. <laughs> to their mother entering an abusive relationship and four divorces. Trisha's mom would bring guys around them all the time and had been married four times by the time Trisha was 10. Trisha seemed to have an unstable childhood with no strong father figure until later in their life. So, hey everyone, today I'm here with my father, my dad. What do you think of me making YouTube videos? Uh, well, as long as you do it with your dad, good things, that's good. Luckily, Trisha Paytas and their mom were very close, as well as their siblings, one older brother and one younger sister. Trisha Paytas claims that apart from that, they didn't have many childhood friends and were bullied at school. What kept Trisha Paytas going through all this turmoil was their dream of being a performer and entertainer in LA, a Hollywood starlet. Like if people try to bring me down, I was like, okay, they're already deterring from their dreams by just wasting energy on me. Instead of like trying my back or wasting energy worrying about it, I would put my energy into what I knew I wanted to do, which was perform and entertain and get to LA. Trisha Paytas has idolized Hollywood starlets too. From Britney Spears. Trish idolized Britney Spears since middle school. I would love what? to just join Britney. I want to be her friend. To Anna Nicole Smith. And that's our Anna transformation. Trim spot, baby. So today I wanted to channel my inner Anna Nicole Smith. Trim spot, baby. To Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. <gasps> Trisha Paytas has always been enamored with Hollywood's most glamorous and set out to create an iconic story that would rival the ones she idolized. A lot of her stories of addiction and mental health struggles mirror Hollywood starlet stories, which begs the question, did Trisha Paytas accidentally stumble upon a similar story to those of her idols? Did she base her real life off of these women? Or are all of the stories of Trisha Paytas' past simply that? just stories. I have a wild imagination too. I just like make up stories. <laughs> and then I lie, but it's just like, I, I like to embellish a good story. All the people that are legendary died young. Yeah, I don't care about legacy or anything. That's all I care about. Really? Mm -hmm. So eventually, Trisha found their way to LA to start their life and make their dreams of becoming a star finally a reality. Only that's not exactly what happened. When Trisha turned 18, they moved out to LA to live with their dad. But after a major fight, their dad kicked them out. And with no money and nowhere to go, they turned to stripping and escorting. Five pull-ups. I was on a pull pulling myself up all the time. You <laughs> Were you prostituting at the time? Yes. Unfortunately, this is also allegedly where Trisha Paytas began to abuse various substances. They claim during this time, they started seeing high profile clients who would give them various substances. But I did meet him through the person who booked me for escorting. Okay. So it was that situation, but I told him I didn't want money. I was like, oh, I'm like really excited to like hang out. Like I don't, I don't need money. I was just like into drugs and stuff. I was like, give me just drugs. And for a little while, their life went majorly downhill because of it. But Trisha Paytas' dreams of being famous were still alive and they got 
got small acting roles and developed a MySpace following. And that brings us to the social media era of Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas created their main YouTube account. We have a friend. Hi. Trisha Paytas created their main YouTube account, Blonde Sundoll for MJ, in 2007. Hey everyone! Paytas is mainly known today for, well, honestly, the drama surrounding themselves. I hate people just like, that are you. You're the person I hate in this world. Though the content that they primarily do on their channel are mukbang videos. Oh. <laughs> Vlogs that show their incredibly bizarre life. I can buy anything I want, so we thank you. And most infamously, their kitchen floor videos. Trisha Paytas is definitely one of, if not the biggest, troll on the internet. <laughs> me and Bay made up. He got me an ice cream sandwich. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Food is the easiest way to make up with me. But we'll get into that a little bit more later on in the video. Trisha has also gotten into more public feuds than pretty much any other influencer. Can I say that confidently? Yeah, I can. I have one issue with Gabby Hanna. Just in this last year, Trisha Paytas has feuded with David Dobrik. He's a soulless little chipmunk and I don't like him. He's the worst guy ever. Ethan Klein. I don't think I'm the worst. You're kind of the worst. It's so fake and that's why age is not what it was because you guys are fake as fuck. Holy cow, that's crazy. Charlie D'Amelio. She's boring. Like I can't even like get through a Well, she's like, like a, a young minute. girl. But she's like the biggest influencer right now. Like so boring. Stop talking about that. You're not a very nice person. You can't say keep my name out of your mouth when your whole career and livelihood is based on social media. And Dixie D'Amelio. Okay, it's not a low blow. It's like, like retardation, not to be mean. Like, I don't know, I'll probably cancel for saying that. Yeah, but, that's... Like, there is something a little off with her, right? Well, you just called her retarded. But I think there's something, like, maybe off with her. Yeah, but, no but way... that's an offensive word. No, but I think there's an actual slowness there. Yeah, but retarded is a derogatory word. I use a derogatory, but I'm saying, like, she's actually, like, slow. No, but you don't say that word anymore. It's oh. derogatory. You called Dixie mental retardation, which is like, a lot of people think that's crossing the line. I have, you know, mental illness. I have some form of retardation in me. I don't think it's, to me, it's not an offensive word. I was just like, oh, there's something, there's a, there's something off. Jeff Wittick. He's just a coward. Jeffrey Starr. Oh, he's just not a good person to me. Like, I, like, he just wasn't nice. That Jason Nash. He's such a piece of shit. No one disgusts me as much as Jason. Shane Dawson. They're liars, but they're so fake. So fake. And probably way more that I'm currently forgetting. Gabby Hanna. Trisha Paytas has been on YouTube for more than 14 years, which is crazy to think about. I was literally eight years old when Trisha Paytas started their YouTube channel and they grew their main YouTube channel to more than 5 million subscribers and gained more than a million subscribers on their vlog channel. Paytas also just recently started their TikTok account within the last, what is it, year, two years and already has 6 million followers on TikTok. Am I remembering that right? Wow. But this growth was not without, and maybe even because of, endless controversies. And some of them are really bad, so prepare yourself. Trisha Paytas has been filmed rapping the N-word. Oh, you want some Nick cake. Creating racist characters on her channel. I got the fan buttons. It's Trishy. A disturbing normality of early YouTubers, which like, why? Out of all the endless content you could make, why did you choose to do that? Trisha Paytas has also been accused of making mockeries of gender identities and mental disorders. I'm a transgender female to male, but now realizing that I'm actually gay. So today has been very draining as far as my 
years ago. And their videos have really only stayed consistent in one thing. Throughout their 14 years on this platform, Trisha Paytas's videos continue to cross the line between satire, cruelty, and concern for Trisha's health and safety. In the words of Trisha themselves, in an interview they did with Insider, I never cared about being rich or anything. Still don't. I just have this need for constant attention. Maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe it's not but it's how I thrive. And I mean, one could say it's impressive the way that Trisha has been able to monopolize and capitalize off of attention. One could say that, but should one? So before we dive a little bit deeper into the twisted world and mind of Trisha Paytas, here are some even more bizarre facts about Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas started their YouTube channel as a dedication to their hero, at least at the time, Quentin Tarantino. Um, just real quick, I want to give you the top book list ever. Like, you must, must read these books. First one, Quentin Tarantino, The Film Geek Files. Quentin Tarantino, Raised by Wolves. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, The Pocket Essentials. <laughs> The Qu Quentin Tarantino, the man and his movies. Quentin Tarantino. They basically created a fan account before fan accounts were even a thing. In 2010, Trisha Paytas attempted to beat the Guinness World Record for speed talking, but sadly failed. Nevertheless, from this attempt, Trisha gained appearances on The Ellen Show and America's Got Talent. Trisha Paytas has also made appearances in pretty much every single reality TV show. In 2010, they claimed to be a tanning addict in an episode of My Strange Addiction. My name is Trisha, and I can't stop tanning. I mean, I could stop tanning, I just don't want to stop. They were on Big Brother, but decided to leave early on. Wait. <laughs> If I left right now, do I get no money or can I at least get like two days paid? You know what I mean? Or like five days because I was over here early. Like 100% serious. <laughs> they were a guest on Dr. Phil and they also appeared in the TV shows Modern Family, Who Wants to Be a Superhero. Trisha has also appeared in several music videos for popular artists like Eminem, Amy Winehouse, and the All American Rejects. Their IMDb page has definitely got to be the most diverse that I've seen. Trisha Paytas also makes their own music and has nine albums in total and is also a writer and has written 11 books in total, which I've heard are just awesome, grammatically well-written, and captivating books. Trisha Paytas has also come out with multiple money grabs, I mean businesses, that we'll cover more later in this video. Businesses like a subscription box, multiple skincare lines, merch, but we'll get to all of that in a little bit. Basically, whenever there's a money-making opportunity, Trisha Paytas takes full advantage of it. A theme with quite a few YouTubers and influencers, hence why I make this video series. Paytas has dated several people publicly, with very public breakups. Most people who follow Trisha in recent years know about their very public relationship with Vlog Squad member Jason Nash and their very messy public breakup. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop in here and just ask you all to not send me stuff about Jason anymore. Um, We've been broken up for three months. In 2016, Paytas also dated the performer Sean Vanderwilt and posted about their relationship on their YouTube channel. When the couple broke up, Paytas posted, that's a tongue twister, Paytas posted, a breakup video on their kitchen floor, kickstarting the infamous kitchen floor videos. The video was titled, He Cheated, I'm Done. Paytas then posted a follow-up video titled, Sean Vanderwill is Gay. A 
alleging that their ex is gay, which is either outing someone or a lie. And I'm not sure which one is worse, probably outing someone, so I'm hoping that it was just a lie. Then a few days later after that breakup video series, Trisha Paytas posted a video titled I'm a Chicken Nugget. I woke up this morning feeling like a chicken nugget. You guys, if you feel like a chicken nugget, you, you feel like not delicious. Well, you feel delicious, but you also feel like fried and fake on the inside because the chicken nugget I feel like is McDonald's chicken nuggets and they're fake. Trisha Paytas also got married to a cardboard cutout of Brad Pitt after teasing a mysterious engagement. I'm engaged. I'm getting married next Friday, November 1st. The chapel is booked. <laughs> So the history of Trisha Paytas on the internet is very bizarre and out there and um, diverse, I would say. But lately, much of the news surrounding Trisha Paytas has to do with their latest internet fallout with Ethan Klein, the former co-host of the podcast Frenemies that the two did together. You're the person I hate in this world. Trisha Paytas is also engaged to Ethan Klein's brother-in-law, which makes him Paytas' soon-to-be brother-in-law. Many criticized Trisha for the way that the fallout happened on the podcast and the subsequent video after video that Paytas posted that just completely demolished their business, family, and friendship relationships with Ethan Klein and Ela Klein. I have this um, feeling in my heart that I need to, um, that I need to step away from families and it's really, really, really a heavy heart that I say that. I probably could never fully explain the enigma that is Trisha Paytas, but that was my best attempt at unpacking the fever dream of a background that Trisha Paytas has. So how did Trisha Paytas become a social media sensation and a multimillionaire? With a cult following of both dedicated fans and equally dedicated haters, Trisha Paytas' YouTube channel, though it started out as a fan page for Quentin Tarantino, really started to take off when they started shitposting and trolling. <laughs> something they were surprisingly really good at. I think this was because Trisha unknowingly encapsulated everything that was entertaining about the internet. Drama always surrounded them. They carried on this train wreck trope. They were publicly messy, but you just don't want to look away from them. They made shocking and surprising content that contained a lot of clickbait, but was also really engaging. So it got the clicks and then kept people watching. I am stepping back from a persona, from a person that is Trish, Trisha Paytas. This and that, she cries, she eats, she gets lipo, she's fat, she's gross, she's skinny, she throws up, she's a bad influence, she's problematic. Yada, 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 I have no identity. And they also seem to really, really like outraging people, which in a way gets people talking and engaging with your content and is definitely one way to promote yourself. Saying that they're voting for Mitt Romney and Trump with very interesting points. Hello to all my fellow young Americans. Yes, young America, we are like the votes. We are like the generation that is picking our president basically. Yeah, so I wanted to make my official video slash support for Romney Ryan 2012. Yay! We haven't really had a hot president since like Kennedy, but we all know how that ended. 
So, then another reason I'm gonna vote for Mitt, well, <laughs> my kitten is named Mitts. <laughs> so I think it's, well, it's actually Mittens, but we call him Mitts for, you know, short. Um, so yay, that's like a sign, I think, right? And, um, Mitt rhymes with tit. Everybody's been asking around me what I think about Donald Trump running for president of the United States of America. <gasps> well, I think it's peachy. I think it's superb, actually. What? Are we getting Mexicans that are dishonest? I didn't even know this was a thing. Oh, okay, he's talking about immigrants, illegal immigrants, right? Right? Is that what they're sending us over? Okay, I agree with that. We do not need the illegal immigrants in here. Yes, I'm over the Mexicans. China's smart, but I say that out of fear, because China's smart. Because isn't that where Kim Jong-un is? Like, China's smart. To posting bizarre and out there videos seemingly meant to confuse and concern people. Eating Thai pods, is it a joke or is it snack? Eating Thai pies will not get this ass. Initially, and even still to this day, many people who came across Trish's content believed them to be serious. There's an endless debate about whether or not what Trisha posts on the internet is real or not, and whether or not Trisha knows what they're doing, which they have admitted to being a troll in the past, but even to this day, whenever they post content, there's that sort of question of, is this the trolling Trisha, or is this the real Trisha, and what is real and what isn't? And to me, it's clear that Trisha Paytas knows exactly what they're doing and sort of enjoys people speculating on their sincerity. It seems that their own identity on social media is a performance. That's what captivates their audience, ever curious about who is the real Trish. So through trolling and posting bizarre content that questioned, concerned, and engaged their viewers, Trisha became a massive social media success. I mean, well, it depends on what you define success, because technically, a ton of people that were following and keeping up with them hated them, but it seemed that Trisha loved being hated. <laughs> And all of Trisha's success and large following also came with a lot of monetary gain. Trisha Paytas became a multi-millionaire, all off of being a troll on the internet and capitalizing off of that in pretty much every way possible. Literally all you do is just obsess over money. I like money, I like money. In 2021, Trisha Paytas's net worth was estimated at $10 million, which is a lot when you look at First off, Trisha Paytas's quality content. Pam and Kennedy. Okay, sorry <laughs> about that. Um, where was I? Kennedy was. There's a plane. <laughs> okay, I don't know where I was going with that. So, anyways, um. Edit. Can we just talk about how Trisha doesn't edit any of their videos really at all, but we can peek into the sheer massive amount of wealth that Trisha's accumulated through a video that they filmed with Insider, where they showed off their massive closet that's bigger than my bedroom, maybe even house, and in their closet are countless bedazzled items like bedazzled toilet paper, a bedazzled pizza box, and others all beside a designer shoe collection. The closet definitely encompasses all that is Trisha Paytas. This is my closet. It's my first like grown up closet, so I feel really cool and bougie with it. It costs like seventy thousand dollars. My style is definitely, it's definitely tacky. I am the definition of money does not buy style or class. Trisha Paytas just bought a house as well, and you can see in vlogs just how extravagant and large and lavish their house is. So basically, Trisha Paytas is living large. But Trisha Paytas's lavish lifestyle comes with a price because they built the fortune they have off of being hated. And a lot of people hate Trisha Paytas and feel they spread so many harmful and dangerous messages that they need to be removed from the internet entirely. The change.org petition currently has 102,000 signatures, and the description reads, This person spouts racist, homophobic, and all-around disgusting things that if anyone else said, they would be ridiculed and targeted. Their YouTube career has been a joke. They're well known for being a domestic are wording their partners and harassing people on and offline. They glamorize manipulative relationships and domestic they have used 
unaliving themselves and drama to get more views on their music videos and their merch sales. Almost daily, they use mental health issues as an excuse for every bad thing that they do. They've been claiming over the last few years that they've been diagnosed with multiple mental illnesses, then go on to harass and make fun of others that have mental illnesses. Trisha loves to say hurtful things, but whenever a drama channel or a person on Twitter says anything negative to them, they threaten to have them sued by their lawyers, or they just go and put claims on all of their videos so that they would get their revenue for all of the hard work, even when the videos and other information is fair use. So we'll see how this video does. This person needs to be off YouTube and stop their promotion of hate on the internet to impressionable young adults and children too. Many people are getting hurt by them because of their jealousy and need for constant attention. I wanted to try something fun. I've been at home a lot with spit up and dirty diapers and I just wanted to dress up a little bit for once. So this is, this is the thing. In recent years, Trisha Paytas has been praised for being body positive. All bodies are beautiful. Your body is beautiful. The most beautiful thing is being healthy. And if you're with a guy, a girl, or a non-binary that tells you anything other, you leave them before they can leave you. But this has not always been the case. And in the past, Trisha Paytas has spread so much dangerous diet information. And I want to put a trigger warning out there if you are sensitive to topics related to eating disorders this segment might not be the best for you. So if you are struggling or have struggled with disordered eating or your relationship with food, I would avoid Trisha's channel at all costs. And I recommend skipping this chapter, which you can find the chapters for this video in the description. There are videos of Trisha Paytas drinking water for 10 days straight and showing how much weight they lost. So that is where the water fasting comes in. It's tough, it's rough, I'm starving. So this is what I do, I fill up my water supply in the morning. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner that you're filling up. I guess that's helping release toxins. I guess that's part of the water fast is getting out bad toxins in your body. Paytas has also posted videos on the other extreme end where they do mukbangs and binge on pizza and fast food. sometimes mounting to 10,000 plus calories in one sitting. Hey, what's up everybody? Today I am doing <laughs> the ultimate eating show. It's called the 10K Calorie a Day Challenge. Um, 10,000 calories in one day. Of course, anyone can make any sort of diet life choices that they want to personally, but it becomes a sort of different situation when you're filming yourself and you're filming your eating habits, posting it for millions to see and to interact with and engage with. And a lot of people, especially experts, feel that there's a certain responsibility there when you have a large platform to not spread dangerous information. I personally am not an ED expert, nutritionist or dietitian, so I can't weigh in on how dangerous this type of content is, but I will include clips here of experts weighing in on Trisha Paytas' content and the possible harmful effects. Now, if we looked at Trisha's channel from about a year ago, we'll see back-to-back -back episodes of her trialing some pretty extreme fad diets. So she did the five-day water fast cleanse where she consumed, well, just water. She did an egg diet where she actually ended up gaining weight eating only eggs. And she did the Joker diet where she ate an entire head of iceberg lettuce. But what I do take issue with above all else is Trisha messing with a very vulnerable subsect of her following. And that is those currently struggling or those with a history of disordered eating and eating disorders. I thought today I would show you what I eat 
what I've been eating in the past five days to lose eight pounds. Apart from sharing messages that could trigger EDs, once in a blue moon, Trisha Paytas goes on a weight loss journey, which is of course their prerogative if they want to do that. But the problem is, Trisha Paytas uses this as an opportunity to advertise a ton of different and super, super random diet products. Hey guys, so today's video, I am super excited. I'm doing a review of the Tommy Tucker, the Slim Shape Leggings, and the Slim Gel from 100 Center. As you can see, it helps tighten skins, reduce fat cells, and melts away cellulite, and also reduces the appearance of stretch marks. A lot of people ask me, why are you don't have stretch marks on your stomach or my thighs, which tend to grow larger than the rest of me, and this is my little secret. I just could not live without this. This is my everything. That is it. Like I said, all the information will be below. Don't forget my code 60 Trisha. We'll get you 10% off, but only until May 30th. OMG, look at the difference in my tummy since using at Flat Tummy Co's shakes. They are three times more effective than diet and exercise alone and filled with protein, fruits, and vitamins and 20% off today. Check them out. In a completely different body position, one photo much less tan than the other, one photo completely done up in hair and makeup, one photo where she looks sad and another photo where she looks happy. The side by side photo comparisons are pointless because you can't compare those two photos at all. Not that you should anyways. And Trisha Paytas has advertised a ton of different products like this, usually using those standard manipulative tricks to make it look like they're losing all this weight or in the best shape of their life, but they continue to go on this cycle of gaining weight and then using that as an opportunity to promote weight loss products. This is another garbage product that no one should use that's actually interested in losing weight healthily and properly. I love you, Trish, but this type of marketing is part of the reason you yourself have so many body image issues. Congrats on passing it on to generations of girls to come. These products are not safe. These products are not healthy. These products are not good for you. And let alone from people's perceptions or ideas or opinions on lipo and all those things, it's being completely dishonest dare I say, a scam. There's such standard, like, fakey, scammy weight loss ads with the before and after photos in completely different lighting, angles, clothing, even timelines. Like, for one of these ads, Trisha shows a photo of her from, like, years ago compared to recently, which obviously, over time, your body just goes through natural changes. I personally feel that most diet products are kind of just money grabs, preying on people's insecurities and society's unrealistic beauty standards. The YouTuber Swole Normus also did a great video on these diet products and why it's all pretty misleading and scammy. This is from Miriam Webster. Definition of a scam, a fraudulent or deceptive act or operation. Would you call putting a before and after, a before picture that's very, very old, before liposuction, and putting an after when you're sucking in your stomach, smiling, tan, with your shirt off, with your top off, holding a product saying, you can save 50% off now, this is amazing, I lost all this weight using this product. Would you consider that deception? Would you consider showing someone and telling them, look, I use this product, look at all this weight I've lost, you can lose weight too, buy this product, but that's not how you lost the weight? That's not how you improved your health or lost body fat? That's not at all what that product actually does? It won't work for you? Would you call that deception? Fuck yeah, you would. It's absolutely deception. It's an absolutely fraudulent or deceptive act. I believe giving people false information lying to people about before and afters and doing so to sell a product, I believe that classifies as a scam. Offering up results and giving people the tools that will not get them the results, that's not delivering. You're delivering someone some kind of bullshit supplement to get them the results that you're showing, but it won't give them that result. It won't help them achieve that that is a scam. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's surprising that Trisha Paytas has participated in this kind of stuff, and it kind of just makes me sad the sheer amount of influencers who push out products like these and prey on primarily their young audience demographic by making them feel like society has always made them feel, which is your body isn't good enough, you're not attractive enough, and you need this product and to pay money to this company to make yourself look better and be accepted by society.
I know a lot of people criticize when commentary channels bring up things that people have done years and years ago as a sort of criticism against them, but I do think it is important to mention that Trisha Paytas has done a lot of racist things. From her character Trishy. I also have Hello Kitty chopsticks, which shows I love Hello Kitty as a true fan, and I'm also not racist because I eat rice. To a video they posted saying they think they're black. I feel like I'm born the wrong race. I'm not gonna get into it. I feel like I was. I'm sorry. Cultural, culturally, I'm a black person. Oh, I guess I am an interracial whore. What do you gotta say about it? Let me guess a lot. But first, let me. One thing people love to criticize me for is fetishizing the black man. Blah, 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 blah. I don't hear I'm racist a thousand times a day. Like, if I'd be like, oh, I'm racist, but okay, but I have like 500 black men. Oh, well, you fetishize them. Like, I can't win and I'm never gonna win. Why can't I just make one more video on this? Because it pisses me the fuck off. To anti Semitic jokes. Okay, this is the one I had a problem with. Okay. Now, now Trisha, <laughs> you know you can't, you says rating my Jew lunch. Uh huh. Do you not see what's the problem with that? I couldn't fit ish in there. But Jew is like a derogative. No. My Jew lunch? I think it's the way if you say it. I was writing like, oh, my Jew lunch. I can tell you with 100% with certainty you cannot say that. It's offensive. And telling Ethan Klein that they're being Jewy in a text message. Even if all of these were Trisha Paytas trolling, they're still spreading really harmful, dangerous ideologies. And people who actually feel that way may latch onto that. And the main reason why I presented this information is because it's really up to you as the viewer to make your own educated opinion on someone with the full context and background. And I try and give that as much much as I possibly can in an hour long video. Let's examine a little bit more some of the really offensive things Trisha Paytas has said regarding gender identity and mental disorders. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I feel like I just sort of brushed over it and needed to circle back to it. Trisha Paytas claimed they were transgender once in the strangest way possible, in a very, very odd series of videos that pretty much outraged everyone. In my head, I feel like I'm a transgender female to male, but also like a drag queen. I've always been drawn to the transgender community in the room, but I just admired them and I just love that they could just be out and open and people like a lot of them. Trisha Paytas also claimed to have dissociative identity disorder back when creators who had DID were trying to bring awareness. And around a similar time that Anthony Padilla, a larger creator on this platform, made a video featuring people with DID. Trisha Paytas claimed to have DID and even made a video showcasing their alters. Now today has been very draining as far as my alters go. I don't, I don't even give a fuck if people call me crazy, like, fuck, I'm crazy, bitch, you're crazy too, like, get over it, like, it's just, girl, bye, like, this is the internet, like, okay, you're gonna tell me what I am, who I am, and where I live, no, thank you, no, thank you, not today, not today. And this really outraged a lot of people for good reason. It was obvious that Trisha Paytas was trolling and really seemed to be making fun of or making light of a really, really serious condition. Anthony Padilla spoke out about how ridiculous and offensive these videos were, and Trisha Paytas immediately latched onto that for some more drama content and came out with drama videos against Anthony Padilla. A YouTuber named Anthony Padilla recently made a really informative video on DID. He actually took to Instagram to respond to Trisha 
comment and said, Claiming you have DID is not a cool excuse to mock people in the community and call them crazy. You can watch my video to learn about DID from people who have DID and actually know what they're talking about. When Trisha saw Anthony's response calling her out on her behavior, she absolutely lost her shit and uploaded a video response called Dear Anthony Padilla. It's just so disgusting to be like, well, get diagnosed first. Like, have a doctor tomorrow. You don't need, I don't need to tell anybody concrete proof evidence just what I have. I don't need to go into detail what I've talked about with doctors and stuff like that. As Trisha Paytas has said in the past, controversy brings them money. So all of these offensive trolling situations are clearly just a cash grab made off of disrespecting people's identities and serious conditions they may be dealing with. For a while, it seems that the internet was convinced that Trisha had become a new person and had changed and grown. 2021 seemed to be Trisha Paytas's year of redemption until it turned into the year of their biggest downfall. Trisha seems to know the internet pretty well and seems to know that people move on and forget things fairly quickly. With enough time, it seems that people will forget pretty much anything, which is why Jeffree Star still exists on this platform. The complicated truth is no one really knows who Trisha Paytas is. It's all smoke and mirrors and capitalizing off of trends. For a little while, Trisha was seen as the anti-hero of the internet that people kept watching because they were curious. Who is Trisha really? And will the mask ever slip? The performance ever end? Or is the mask and the performance itself the real Trisha? Meanwhile, while more and more people have watched and tried to understand Trisha, Trisha continues to laugh their way all the way to the bank. In a BuzzFeed interview, Trisha Paytas admits that their trademark move of addressing scandals and drama by posting a series of videos back to back filled with mid-roll ads can be a way to obtain a sizable income spike. For example, through getting into a scandal with Dixie and Charlie D'Amelio. Oh, like, like retardation, that's me. Wait, you just called her retarded. AKA children, Paytas claimed that their TikTok went from making a hundred a day to sixteen thousand dollars a day at the height of the back and forth. And she's literally the most followed person on social media. That's what she signed up for. Um, the fact that getting into drama allowed Trisha Paytas to make in a day what some people make in a year is mind-blowing to me. What the heck? I guess the free market has spoken. And what does Trisha do with all that extra money? They spend. A lot. Though allegedly, Trisha Paytas brings in $800,000 a month. They also have a $13,000 monthly mortgage to pay. Around $100,000 a month goes to taxes. Trisha Paytas also spends thousands weekly on getting their hair, nails, and face professionally done. Paytas also claims that one of their music videos can cost $100,000 to produce. And when BuzzFeed asked Trisha Paytas how much they spend when they go on shopping sprees, Trisha Paytas basically replied 5000 a week then on their splurges 60 to 80000 dollars all from being an internet troll that gets into controversies i think i have to change content paths look i've got a newborn to take care of if you see me doing kitchen floor videos just mind your business <laughs> i'm kidding but also like Dang, maybe I'm not. <laughs> so, did Trisha Paytas accumulate all of this wealth through their YouTube ad revenue? Well, considering most of their videos end up getting demonetized, I would say a safe bet is no. I hate to say it, but Trisha Paytas was actually really smart in how they conducted their business and gained a fortune off of being a troll on the internet because they diversified their income quicker than most influencers do and went into a ton of other businesses that they promoted on their platform. Though a lot of these businesses failed or exhibited very scammy behavior. Y'all need to know what scam means. Trisha Paytas did Cameo and heavily promoted it for a while. Um, I heard your nickname was Dense Juice Bag, but like, sounds kind of mean, but if that's your nickname, okay, get it, get it. Um, I don't know the song Girl Code. I wish I knew that song, but I could sing you. What can I sing you from Broadway? 
time through accepting limits. Cause someone says they're so. Some things I cannot change. But till I try, I'll never know. And a lot of people were really critical of how much they were charging for a cameo. In a video titled Coming Clean About My Scamming, Trisha Paytas addresses the issue. Kind of. Y'all need to know what a scam means okay because i saw another well i didn't see the video i don't i don't watch it but another person was like she's scamming her fans for that money like a scam is something like if you pay for a service and that person doesn't follow through trisha paytas claimed that what they were doing was not a scam because a scam is when you pay for something and you don't receive the product which is true but i would say that myself and others use the word scam as sort of a broader term to encompass a variety of bad businesses and bad business practices, such as when a business or service isn't quality or worth what is being charged, when promotions or ads are manipulative and deceptive, when customers and audience members are taken advantage of, when customers don't receive what they paid for. For example, the channel Hot Tea posted a video on December 16th, 2019, alleging that she paid $500 to Trisha's Patreon for an Instagram shout-out that Paytas never delivered on. The $500 tier is an Instagram shout-out. You get a whole Instagram story shout-out for $500. I ended up actually getting the $500 tier from Trisha's Patreon, which I got a while ago. I got it at the beginning of December. She literally just ignored me. I mean, it doesn't like technically stay the timeline, but to be honest, I don't think she's gonna do it. And honestly, I don't think there's anything I can do about it. I think I'm out 500 US dollars. <laughs> Eventually, Paytas' sister Callie, who apparently runs their Patreon, reached out to Hot Tea and refunded the $500, I'm guessing because of all the backlash and comments they were getting about it. But soon after Hot Tea was refunded, she received two copyright strikes, not just claims, but strikes, which if you get three, your channel's taken down, on her Trisha Paytas videos. Striking critical videos seems to be something Trisha Paytas likes to do, so... We'll see how this video does. I think one of the worst scams, alleged scams, that Trisha Paytas was involved in was back in 2017. In fact, this scam was so bad that Trisha Paytas' whole channel was demonetized for five months because of it, according to Trisha Paytas themselves. Trisha said they inadvertently participated in a scam with a company called Style Hall. Style Hall was a company that would help people get brand deals, but they would take a percentage of your revenue. The company allegedly offered Trisha Paytas alongside other larger creators a premium for participating. Trisha Paytas told a reporter, if I made, let's say a basic number, 10,000 a month, they were going to give me $120,000 a month. That part wasn't a scam. I was getting that from the beginning. The scam part came when the company started signing on other smaller creators and taking a large percent of their ad revenue. In fact, Style Hall would take 40% of the ad revenue smaller creators would make and redistribute it to larger creators like Paytas, which sounds like a pyramid scheme. Or the opposite of Robin Hood, taking from the poor and giving to the rich. Style Hall shut down their US operations in 2019 and their former executive was charged with embezzling $22 million from the company. But it seems like YouTube actually cracked down on this whole thing from what it seems and Trisha Paytas' channel at least was demonetized for five months. So that's good on that. But I will say, I think it's fair to mention that not all businesses that Trisha has been involved in have been shady and scammy. Their Sad Boy 2005 merch line that sells $85 sweatpants that says it's okay to be sad doesn't seem to be getting any negative reviews. I absolutely adore it. They also run a pretty large and successful OnlyFans account, which their sister Callie helps them run, apparently in exchange for a shout out for Callie's OnlyFans account. Huh? What? Oh. <laughs> okay. 
which having your sister work for free in exchange for a shout out is very odd to me. Is that just me? Like I personally would also make sure that my sibling was getting paid as well and not just getting a shout out, basically working for exposure, but you know, I don't know the inner workings of that whole deal or what's really going on with that. So, and apparently Trisha doesn't make any new content on their OnlyFans account and instead repurposes their old content for a fee. Yet according to Trisha Paytas, they're still making like 150K a month off of their OnlyFans. At one point during the time of like the subscription box era, when a ton of different subscription boxes were coming out, the whole subscription box concept is interesting to me. I think a lot of companies realized if they have this huge discount and promotion for people's first boxes, they can get a ton of people to sign up for these monthly renewal subscription boxes, forget they signed up, and then be like, oh crap, I'm still paying for that when they see like a 60 or $80 charge the next month for another subscription box. At least that's what happened to me with FabFitFun. <laughs> so anyways, at one point, Trisha Paytas launched their own box called the Glitter Box. Pretty soon after the launch of the Glitter Box, the subscription box community, which apparently there is, and that sounds so fun and innocent, started reviewing and talking about the product. The Glitter Box concept was, believe it or not, that everything in the sub box had glitter in it. Shocking, I know. But apparently, once fans and reviewers started receiving the boxes, they began to notice how cheap the products were. I don't really think it's like the best quality. Some of the like pleather detailing online is a little bit like ripped and torn in places. There's a couple little places where there's like kind of some chunks taken out of the plastic, but mine honestly looks like it's been really, really scratched up. Like it's been hanging out around somewhere for a while, it's being scooted about. There's all sorts of scratches on the top and all the way around the lid. It also is like definitely leaked around the outer portion here. There's like dried up mask all the way around it. There's also mask underneath the spoon. It honestly looks like it's been used before. I have to say right off the bat, this is looking a little bit like, you know, like maybe like a Target holiday cheap gift section. Does that sound bad? You know, something that you would buy for like a little stocking stuffer for your fourth niece or like if you have to put together a, the gift basket for like a Santa swap at work for people you don't really like all that much. Okay, so the next item we have here, it looks like something you could find um, right next to this in the holiday gift section at the Target. God, that has a very disturbing scent. It smells very, um, what's a good way to put this? It smells very pukey. They're very cheap brushes. Do I really expect high quality brushes? Not really, to be honest. I really haven't seen the value in this box. I'd expect more from a $60 box. This is something that I would go to like the dollar store or five below. Um, and if I needed stock and stuff for, for my daughter or for a kid or something. The box was $60 to purchase and the supposed value of the box was 150. So this box is a pretty expensive box. It is $60 bi-monthly. But people began pointing out how the products really just looked like they were from the dollar store. And of course, surprise, surprise, could be found on Alibaba and AliExpress for less than a dollar. You can probably buy these pins on like Alibaba or something like that and get like branding put on them for super super cheap I would say that these are brushes that you could probably find again on like Alibaba or something like that Trisha Paytas also ran a pretty similar grift on Etsy. The YouTuber Sid talked about this on his channel. His content's great, definitely check it out. But at one point, Trisha Paytas promoted an Etsy store on their channel that supposedly featured items that they handmade themselves. On May 28th, 2012, she announced on Twitter that she had opened an Etsy store. Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a super quick video to tell you that I have a new Etsy shop. Um, everything is made by me crystals on there. Made by love from me to you. 
The only thing is, these exact bracelets could be found on eBay for $5 and Trisha was selling them on Etsy for $25. She's hiking up the price five times more than what she likely paid for it. I mean, obviously a ton of stores buy things at a wholesale price and then resell them at a marked up price, but to do it so out in the open and blatantly dishonestly is kind of funny. Back in 2016, Trisha Paytas also received a lot of backlash for promoting a ton of different fast fashion scammy type of companies. Honestly been the best quality that I've gotten so far from one of these affordable like you know wholesale sites. Sammydress.com, 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 I'm Sammydress.com, 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 I'm Zaffil.com, Zaffil.com. She posted sponsored videos for Sammydress.com and Zaffil.com on August 21st, September 19th, October 10th, October 12th, October 18th, November 14th, November 18th, November 22nd, November 28th, December 5th, and December 12th. Trisha has advertised Sammy Dress, Rose Gal, Dress Lily, Trends Gal, Twinkle Deals, Zaffle, Rose, and Nasty Dress. A lot of customers report not receiving their orders at all, and if and when the garment finally does arrive, it often bears little to no resemblance to the pictures posted online. And of course, customer service is barely reachable, especially when it comes to returns and exchange. Changes. And one of the companies in particular, SammyDress.com, had so many bad reviews of people not receiving items or the items being really bad quality. Now, of the customers who were lucky enough to receive their items, most said that the sizing was totally off, even noting that the items were small enough to fit a child, the garment smelled of harsh chemicals, and the overall construction and quality of the item was poor. I mentioned customers that were lucky enough to actually receive their item because most customers reported not even ever having received their item. Recently, Trisha Paytas came out with a skincare line, which don't you worry, we'll get to that. But Trisha Paytas' most recent skincare line was not their first. I feel like there's a that's what she said joke in there somewhere. You're hardly my first. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Yes, I am rewatching The Office right now. I know, I'm basic. But Trisha Paytas had a previous skincare line called Feel Like Trish, where she sold bronzers and lube, which I guess is more on brand than her most recent skincare line, so. This is actually not the first time that Trisha has dipped her toes into the skincare line waters. She actually had her very own skincare line called Feel Like Trish, and she sold everything from bronzers to lube. And for this skincare line, she made like a whole video to promote it as well. This brand didn't seemingly have any sort of major backlash. It just kind of ended and fizzled out. It probably just wasn't really selling well or was only meant to exist for a short period of time. So eventually it ended and Feel Like Trish was no longer a thing. And that brings us and this fever dream of a video to Trisha Paytas' most recent business endeavor that went terribly, terribly wrong. And that's their skincare partnership with the brand Glow Skin Enhancement, an independent beauty manufacturer. The line was advertised with a commercial and music video. I just... I just have to mention this. In Trisha Paytas' skincare music video, they are literally playing the part of a snake oil salesman. The entire plot of the music video is that they're a snake oil salesman who's shilling out the skincare in shady and manipulative ways. And many were quick to notice, well, first off, some really interesting imagery on the commercial and the use of heavy filters and makeup. Hi, I'm Trisha Paytas and I do confident with no makeup while wearing makeup and a heavily post-production filter. No more hiding behind filters or Photoshop. You don't need it. Yeah. Like, this commercial has to be a joke, right? Like, this has to be for publicity and to get people talking about it. Some people said the video was just a promotion to get people talking and it was supposed to be a joke. Not everyone thinking the skin filter isn't a joke. It's an obvious throwback to old skincare commercials. There's no way that you can think it's a good idea to filter a video that much when you're talking about skincare. On June 7th, the line launched with a seven-piece skincare set priced at $199. 
$9. Why are celebrities and influencers all coming out with skincare lines right now? Why? Especially seemingly scammy or shady skincare lines that are deceptive. So the skincare is already starting off on a really weird foot, but then once people started receiving their packages, things got even worse. A TikToker posted an unboxing video when she received Trisha Paytas's and Glow Skin Enhancement's new Miracle Elixir line, and in this TikTok, she showed how the products arrived broken and damaged. So I got Trisha Paytas's collection so i'm gonna do an unboxing i'm not gonna try it on today because i have some makeup on so i wish there was a little bit more padding because it looks like my box is a little bit cray cray oh man so this is how it got everything's all over the place some of my things were spilt that's not cool and this is broken what the f Also, look at this paper. Look how it came. $200 for me to receive a package that has spilt items. Like, the box came crazy. Like, what the heck? I'm pretty sad, you guys. Hopefully they have good customer service because I'm definitely going to contact them. Charlotte Wilson, the CEO of Glow Skin Enhancement, who is not a doctor, dermatologist, chemist, or esthetician. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an esthetician. I'm not a dermatologist. Started to receive a lot of online hate for this which the company responded to extremely poorly. Which I always think it's important to know when an influencer collabs with a company and the product arrives broken and damaged or faulty, like obviously that's not the influencers doing. They have some responsibility because they're promoting this product, they have their face and name on it, but also it's sort of the company's job to make sure that all of that is in order. It's not like the influencer can be behind the scenes, acting like the CEO, running things, making sure the shipping production, all of that is going smoothly. You know, there's only so much you can do as an influencer who's not involved in the inner workings of a business. So I definitely think it was fair that the company was receiving equal backlash for the skincare. When the TikTok about products being broken gained a lot of attention, the user who posted the video received a very, very, very concerning comment from the business owner. The TikTok said, you can lie and hate on Trish, but when it comes to my business and you want to lie and put this fake lie out, answer your door. Which is kind of threatening and scary considering this customer gave their address for the products to ship out. So the company and the owner could actually have this TikToker's address. So saying something like answer your door is very concerning and scary and not appropriate for a business owner. And the brand owner Trisha collabed with actually commented under this TikTok and let's just say it wasn't very nice. She commented, you liar. Liar who believes her. She is hating on Trish. We are a real company. Girl, I'll sue your little ass. You can lie and hate on Trish, but when it comes to my business and you want to lie and put this fake lie out, answer your door. What the hell? Is this lady for real? Okay, guys. Now I am a little bit upset. As a small business owner, I don't think this was in any way, shape, or form you could have approached this situation. I restated in my videos, no hate to Trish. No hate to the company at all, anything. I just received a bad packaged item. Obviously, if the package wasn't going to have any bubble wrap or anything in it, everything was going to move around in there and break because of the way things ship out. And that's the whole reason why I posted that was because I was upset that it arrived like that and I was just updating my followers and I wanted to get a refund or an exchange or something and I did reach out twice via email and I do not want to post those. I will send them to you privately on Instagram. I don't appreciate getting called a liar or anything because I'm just a customer giving my review. The owner later apologized for this comment, saying that it was left by an employee and not themselves. I don't know how to handle all that, so I have people to, to do my social media. I run my company. I didn't. But I did the right thing. I got rid of someone who's been with me for two years because it was inappropriate. 
It was rude and it was disrespectful. But overall, this is just a concerning situation for many, many reasons. I don't think very much excuses a comment like telling a customer to answer their door. There was also another TikTok of someone claiming that Trisha's skincare line caused serious burns to their face. Well, this is how my day is going. I get off the phone with the dermatologist this morning and they thankfully could get me in super last minute for this whole fiasco. Which sounds absolutely horrifying. And then the skincare influencers or skinfluencers that sounds weird. Started reviewing the skincare line and things got even worse. James Welsh, who is a skincare influencer, made a video where he called the Trisha Cosmetics collab the worst skincare launch ever. James Welsh covered the production of the products. The products were kind of flying around a bit. It's all a bit on the tacky side. It does look like it's curdled. It looks like it's separating a little bit. The ingredients. They also made it very hard to find the ingredients for these products when it first launched. I couldn't find it. This kind of makes me think that these might be white label products and even tested the sunscreen to see if it was effective again in my personal opinion i'm not sure that that's the sunscreen i don't want to say it i feel really bad but something doesn't feel right about that i don't know something's not right i completely forgot i have this camera called sunscreener that sees unprotected skin in their words so it sees exactly where you've applied your sunscreen this camera is designed specifically to show the invisible uv light since sunscreen screen's job is to absorb UV light before it hits your skin. It looks dark when you look at it through sunscreen, whilst unprotected skin appears light. So judging by this sunscreen a camera, this isn't a sunscreen, allegedly, in my opinion. Just uh, thoughts. The camera could be faulty, just trying to cover my back here. Cassandra Bankson, another skinfluencer, discussed in a YouTube video that the products are badly, maybe even dangerously, formulated. What's actually in these products? Now, when I looked at the website, I liked seeing some of the ingredients. I liked seeing some of, you know, sunscreen, whatever. But looking at the formulation, I found it physically impossible that these products could contain these ingredients and only these ingredients. Where are the preservative systems? What is this collagen? booster? Is it a peptide? Is it vitamin C? Those ingredients lists don't make sense. There are things that are missing or there are many things that I do not know. People also criticize the skincare line because Trisha is a multi-millionaire who can have tons of cosmetic procedures and skin treatments done by professionals that most people can't afford. The fact that she's claiming that these products are what saved her skin where she very publicly sees a dermatologist and has a lot of face pills. It's all pretty much one big lie. She is just the face slapped on a brand. So the company and Trisha Paytas received this huge influx of backlash for a ton of different aspects of the skincare line and I think it definitely was not something that the company was expecting or prepared for. Now the product website for Paytas' skincare line shows an error page and when asked on the company Instagram why the collab and products are no longer available for purchase, the company Instagram account claims it was receiving very disturbing hate messages due to the partnership and that it was best to remove it for now. And on that note, please do not send hate messages to anyone mentioned in this video. It's just never a good idea. So these controversies and different business decisions all mounted higher and higher with more and more backlash until it all escalated after the Frenemies podcast fallout. We are producing the show and I'm taking a cut. I feel like that's beyond reasonable. All the beyond highlights. Beyond reasonable. 5%. Yeah. 5%. Do you realize how much 5% was of our last one? That should be enough. I giving it's you 50% of all the members, even though we work and do all the work. You don't think 5% is like enough for the 5% and the highlights was what we agreed to a beginning and that's what it is oh my god okay if you think that's what it's worth okay it's worth more than that to be all honest right with you. i feel like the deal you get is super okay. fair and i feel like you're gaslighting me to be honest saying that you're not like frustrated that's okay. what gaslighting right. is because you're okay. saying i'm gaslighting I'm you gaslighting by saying you. you're not upset you're perfectly oh, wow. you're in a perfect condition right now holy cow that's crazy I just don't see what you just did that's that's really what crazy. did i do i need we i we have to end it now like really <laughs> what did i do 
we gotta stop for real. But, and okay. even what you right. just said was, you're right, Trisha, everything's fine. That's insane. Like the fact that you did that to me is like it's insane. It's not insane. I shouldn't have to walk on eggshells around everything okay. I say. All right, Ethan, we I'm asking a... to end this. I'm asking you. You can leave anytime. Many people were really disappointed with the way that Trisha Paytas handled the fallout and how they pretty much turned it all into a grovel over money. Um, we end up paying for Ethan and Neela, which is crazy because he takes that five percent and vip tickets to disneyland is not cheap the nerve of her to complain about five percent when i'm literally not making a fucking penny at this point it's just so disrespectful it disregards all the hard work we do not only on the crew but now on my wife and all the co and all the people that worked on the merch and it's like okay well you know, fuck you. And then seemingly cross the line in scandal video after scandal video uploaded in true Trisha Paytas fashion. I have this feeling in my heart that I need to step away from Grammys and it's really, really with a heavy heart that I say that. It's actually just like, it's amusing, it was amusing. One, in this video, I will be defending my sister um, and just continuing the continuation of this And also, by the way, there's new merch at zagward 2005com I also have skincare at trishaskin.com and there will be plenty of ads in this video. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Where do we even start? So, like, I looked at him in such a different light. It was a lot of things from realizing my skincare product, like, you know, up until the last one, just talking about my actual health history openly. It just, none of it felt right being applied to skincare because, you know, none of it felt right. Many people were shocked and disappointed with the actions of Trisha Paytas, even though looking back, a lot of this was really standard for Trisha Paytas and is kind of how they've always acted on social media. It seems that Trisha had found a way to convince people that yet again, they actually changed. So people were hopeful and surprised and disappointed when they yet again went right back to their old ways. So the backlash mounted to more than I think even Trisha Paytas, the big biggest troll on the internet was used to. And then more and more of Trisha's lies continued to resurface. The commentary channel Mysterious has really led the way in uncovering a lot of these lies, as well as contradictions of Trish on TikTok. Do you believe that climate change is an urgent time bomb that we need to face immediately? I have no idea what that is. Global warming is a hoax. You know that the earth is warming? I don't. Scientists reply even said there's no rise in temperature in the tropical troposphere. Man-made climate change, carbon in the air. Go green, conserve our energy, less fuel, less toxins into our air, otherwise we're gonna kill ourselves off. It's gonna happen in my lifetime because I don't have kids. Holy sh- Global warming is a hoax. I'm gonna stand by it. I'm gonna have my grandchildren stand by it. I'm gonna have my- This is what really turned me off from Ethan when we did the bus tour. Like he was making fun of like the homeless situation in Hollywood. I don't know, something about it never sat right with me, so. Never, I repeat, never, ever, 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 ever think about moving to Hollywood. I moved to Hollywood and Island thinking I was at Hollywood and Island. Like, hello, we want to live here. We do not want to live here. It's, it's, built, it's disgusting. It's gotten worse than we should. Like, whoa, those are all homeless tents. What? He said I made fun of him for his, his Tourette's when they were clearly jokes. He Why is that a problem? I don't know. Everything was a problem once the show ended. He was like, oh, she's a medic and she made fun of my Tourette's. When we he had Tourette's? Yeah, he has he has like Tourette's, but I didn't make fun of him. Like it's the same way he called me Does fat. Does he really have? Is he just saying that to just be cool? No, I like, think he's great to be like woke or something. I think he really has Tourette's. Okay, well, um, well that's a real problem. Yeah, of course. But once that show ended, it's like she's fat and she made sure. fun of my Tourette's. So now I'm like an ableist. Yeah. But it's not Tourette's. Tourette's is like when you. I have Tourette's things. syndrome. No, Tourette's is when you're like, fuck this, just fuck this, fuck this. Isn't that Tourette's? I love having a friend with Tourette's because now I can like have a soapbox or something. All your TikTok should be about having Tourette's and like, you know. I don't want my whole existence to be defined by the guy with Tourette's. That's what you gotta do. You gotta like go for a thing that people will feel sorry for you for. Dude, Why are you so looking guy. at you as like this god? Because you're just as messed up as me. I mean, you got Tourette's. So you got something like wrong OCD. with your brain it's like too. OCD. So your brain is not wired all the way, right? What? Yes. It's like blind my... leading the blind. Like you're not, you yes, just Yes, it's clear. the blind leading the blind. So there's no... No drama, no negativity coming from my hair. The biggest lie Mysterious uncovered was allegedly contradicting stories Trisha Paytas has told about a middle school teacher essaying them. I had questions with teachers, I would like, like, hang out, like, go to the classrooms, like, try and hang out with them, stuff like that. Like, it wasn't anything like the teachers did. It wasn't like teachers were like leaving me on or you know what I mean? Like, or coming on to me or something. I just was like really attracted to my teachers. Um, okay, no teachers ever did anything appropriate with me, nothing like that. Like, I don't want to even like go there. So, I was weird. I was a little Lolita. Well, in the sense that like it was one side of Lolita. <laughs> um, nothing illegal happened to my teachers ever. <laughs> so, Trisha is claiming now that she was abused by multiple teachers from school. I had 
one incident happened in um middle school where a teacher like groped my boobs all the time when we would do like heads down, seven up. And so when I finally like the principal about it, he told the principal, well, she's been wearing water bras, so she like she's been asking for it. Like it's been teasing me. And the principal's like, have you been wearing water bras? Like, yeah. Say what? <laughs> and the principal was like receptive to that. Yeah, argument? he's like, have you been wearing water bras? I'm like, yeah. He goes, okay, well, let's not wear water bras. I've always been vocal on social media because I was silenced. <laughs> Silly reference in this, but I was silenced for so long um, at my school growing up. I had three different instances with three different teachers in regards to S A R word and M word. It happened in the school, and one, one principal didn't believe me. Two, I was too scared to speak up, and three, the teacher said I was like asking for it, so it was like looked over. The one that I was too scared to speak up on, someone else spoke up years later and ended up getting arrested. But in Illinois, look it up. His name is looking up CP at school. So basically, none of the story makes any sense. Major details change every single time. On top of that, the details Trisha Paytas provided about the teacher's criminal records don't align with public records. I, my first offender, when I was in the sixth grade, um, in Byron, Illinois, there was a teacher, and it wasn't until a couple years later that he got arrested for CP on his computer at school. And I said something, and people like, didn't believe me. But I wish I would have like fought harder and said more. I want to stress to you guys, this teacher was never arrested for CP or any other crimes. And the worst part is Trisha Paytas used the teacher's real name when speaking on these stories and experiences. And now the teacher has passed on, so they can't really defend themselves. It seems like no one will ever really know the real story of what happened except for Trisha themselves and the teacher. And Trisha Paytas has been shown time and time again to be a liar. And like the boy who cried wolf, it's hard to believe someone who lies over and over again. I do want to make clear, no one knows Trisha Paytas' story, and even if things appear like a lie, that doesn't mean they are. I don't think anyone has a right to tell another person that a traumatic experience they experienced didn't happen to them. That being said, Trisha Paytas spread false information about a person who passed away, saying they were arrested for CP when that never happened. And that is really wrong and irresponsible of them, and out of everything they've done that I've mentioned in this video, probably the most harmful thing. I can't fight back anymore. There's no, I don't have one ounce of credibility to my name. I think largely unwarranted, if I'm being honest, I do think a lot of it's unwarranted, like I do it. But no matter what, like I will never be able to stand up for people in the future. I will never be able to speak for myself. Like it's just, it is something that like literally, I am a joke, I am a punching bag. And Nicole, I remember watching real through her reality show where someone comes up to her and like, you know, they're exploiting you, right? Like they're, they're, they're making a mockery of you. And she goes, well, as long as they're paying me, right? Because Trisha had told so many contradicting and conflicting stories, Trisha started receiving a ton of backlash over what people perceive to be a lie. And because of all this backlash, Trisha Paytas posted a very public and intense breakdown. <laughs> please. Hey, please. <laughs> If this event that Trisha Paytas has alleged really happened, then my heart does go out to Trisha because that has to be devastating for people to call your trauma a lie, which is a bummer. Once again, it's like the boy who cried wolf when you tell so many conflicting stories, exaggerate so many things, and contradict yourself constantly, the public starts to disbelieve you. In response to the backlash and Ethan Klein, the former Frenemies podcast co-host taking down the podcast with the allegations, Trisha posted text messages where they say they were told inaccurate information and misspoke, and in a video posted on September 14th, seemed to acknowledge that the allegations they spoke on were false, saying that they don't fact check. This lying thing has come around recently that Trisha lies so much. There's a difference between misspeaking, hearing things, not getting all the facts right, not fact checking, and also, uh, versus 
sharing something you know to not be true for the most intent of tricking someone or, or making someone look bad. I, I get stories and stuff. I hear things from people and I don't backtrack. And that was ultimately why I've never had a podcast. There's never been on front of me. But I'm not the only person in the world to do that. Which is a very, very irresponsible use of such a large platform. And it makes you wonder if they don't fact check how much other false information they've spread. So all this backlash snowballed and snowballed and got larger and larger until a few weeks ago when Trisha Paytas deleted 1,300 videos off of their YouTube channel totaling in over a billion views. A lot of people thought this might have something to do with a video of them resurfacing where they made fun of Courtney Stodden. Money and seduce with your prepubescent body. <laughs> The first thing, it helps to be born. Because <laughs> I'm <not> retarded. Because <laughs> you won't ever know what's inappropriate and you won't even know you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. <laughs> and if they get sick of your laugh or your seduction techniques, they can just lock you in a basement. <laughs> who was someone who was married off to a famous actor as a minor and the whole story of Courtney Stodden is disturbing and sad and I really feel for them because at the time the internet decided to just like dogpile on them for some reason, Trisha included. It's good if you haven't gone through puberty yet like me because they want a girl who they can have sex with and never get pregnant. <laughs> Old bitches, sorry. <laughs> and a lot of people thought that Trish's video making fun of Courtney was done in very, very poor taste. I personally think that Trisha Paytas deleted all of these videos because they didn't want to pull a Shane Dawson, where all of a sudden all of their controversial and really bad takes in former videos starts coming out at a time where they're receiving already a ton of criticism. And then it just turns into this huge, huge backlash that they can just never ever Ever recover from. So for better or for worse, it was kind of smart for them to delete those videos, even though a lot of them are already saved and reposted on the internet. With 1,300 videos, there was probably so, so much more bad content that would have continued to resurface unless Trisha Paytas deleted those videos. And now Trisha is claiming that they don't want any sort of drama, that they want to move on and live a peaceful life and grow and change and focus on themselves. I am quitting drama and there are no more enemies as far as I'm concerned. I mean this very genuinely and sincerely. Which sounds good, but can we ever truly trust the words of Trisha Paytas? That is the question. And that's the confusing web of Trisha Paytas controversies as of now, though I'm sure there's a lot of others, but this video has already been long enough. Most recently, Trisha Paytas has undergone another character rebrand, talking more and more about kind of new age spirituality, like manifesting. Let's talk abundance. Do you need money? Stop needing it right now affirmations. So here's the money affirmations. This is all from the uh, Millionaires of the Bibles book series. This is from Millionaires of Moses and it's all financial doors are open to me. All financial channels are free to me. The money that is required now appropriately comes to me quickly and in peace. And even post videos on a new channel they just created where they just film themselves meditating. Oh. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. And watching those videos, I can't help but think that it's just kind of another troll situation, I'm sorry to say. Though at least it's a more positive one. Like even their Darman parody videos seem fairly positive and not as offensive as some of their past content. Don't scam anyone. Scammers never win and the truth will always prevail. So at least it's sort of a step in the right direction, even if it is Trisha creating more trolling content. So who Trisha Paytas is, is still a mystery. And after all the controversies, the drama, and the different personas, it's hard for anyone to know who the real Trisha is. And I wonder if and when the real Trisha does make an appearance, if anyone will really ever believe them. As I said earlier in this 
video, Trisha Paytas has been really open about their mental health, which I contemplated even mentioning, but decided it's important at least mentioning because it is an aspect to the larger picture of who Trisha Paytas is and their time on the internet. In 2019, Trisha Paytas was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and more recently was also diagnosed with schizophrenia. Recently, there's been a lot of information that has come out about Trisha Paytas' many contradictory statements regarding her mental health diagnoses. I said, tell me, do I have my bipolar or some shit? And he's like, well, everyone has traits of like personality disorders because you have like traits of borderline personality. Have you been diagnosed with something? No, no, because I asked him. I, that was the first thing he said. I'm like, okay, so do you think I'm borderline? Do you think I'm bipolar? And he goes, mm -hmm. honestly, he goes, you have traits of borderline personality disorder, but I've never been fully blown diagnosed. Trisha Paytas claims to have schizophrenia, but recently that has been contested because of a podcast with Dr. Drew. I also was recently diagnosed twice um, as schizophrenic this year, 2021. I'm on medication for it. Um, closely monitoring it for the first six to eight weeks, I didn't feel a change other than not myself, and that was scary. I understand you had a schizophrenia diagnosis at one time. That, that is not what you have, but I could see how if you have these kinds of symptoms, somebody might think that. Trisha Paytas has also made conflicting statements about her borderline personality disorder diagnosis. I have been... I guess diagnosed? I don't know. Therapists have told me to go to DPT classes, say I have traits of DPT. I've never really been like, this is you, but I pretty much think it's me. No two people with borderline are the same. No two people with narcissistic personality disorder are the same. No two people with obsessive compulsive personality disorder are the same. So for Trisha, they're saying that they have borderline personality disorder traits. What Trisha is saying is they have been diagnosed with traits, not the full-blown disorder. So what does that mean? Well, what that typically means is your symptoms are lower. Which has led many to wonder if her mental health diagnoses are even real at all, or what extent of mental health problems she has. And that's another thing that's private information between Trisha Paytas and their doctor. And so it's something that the public will never truly know. And I don't know if it really is anyone's business, except for just in clarity and understanding why why Trisha Paytas does the things that they do and whether or not their mental health can be used as an excuse or a reason for their actions. They also recently got sober after purportedly struggling with substance abuse, something Trisha claims was sort of a root cause of a lot of their breakdowns both publicly and privately. I have been addicted to prescription drugs, illicit drugs. I tried really scary drugs for the first time in my life. Some really hardcore ones I've never tried before in the past couple months. And it all came to an abrupting halt on my birthday, May 8th. I spiraled in all aspects of my life out of control. And at 31, that's embarrassing. Let me rephrase that. It may be embarrassing for some, but it's no longer embarrassing to me, which is why I proudly say my weight, my age, and what I've gone through, because it doesn't matter, like depression doesn't discriminate against age and change isn't just for people who are young, you know? No, don't do that. There was also an incident with their fiance Moses where it seems that Trisha hit their fiance and that's just really concerning. It was never fucking public. Well, maybe you shouldn't hit him. Now everyone thinks I'm a fucking, per like a man beater and shit like that because of you. Yeah. A lot of people have talked about that when criticizing Trisha Paytas. And, um, you know, obviously, no matter what, even if the public doesn't know the inner workings of someone's relationship, it's not okay to hit your partner that just you know, is not okay. Trisha Paytas has also been to psychiatric facilities multiple times. I was in the mental hospital at the beginning of this year. I have been hospitalized twice since then. And has publicly spoken about this in videos and has been really open about their experiences. For those of you who don't know, I was 51, 15. It was, um, as far as traumatic experience goes, pretty traumatic in the sense that I felt out of my mind and it was definitely out of my control. Which I do think is great for dismantling a lot of the stigma surrounding psychiatric facilities and hospitals. Paytas has claimed they only recently have been able to manage their mental health and credit this to a combination of medication and multiple forms of therapy, including dialectical behavioral therapy classes, an eating disorder specialist, a psychiatrist, cognitive group therapy, and a therapist who specializes in gender and sexuality. And I'm working on myself on mental health and seeing a therapist, seeing a psychiatrist, going to group sessions, praying and meditating, and also work work work, work booking. Um, because I just needed a change. 
And I can't help but wonder how many other people are going through similar mental health, substance abuse problems, and identity problems as Trisha Paytas, but don't have all the money and resources that they have to get help and live a fairly stable life. I hope Trisha is truly receiving adequate help and is working on themselves and growing. No one may know the true Trisha Paytas, but whoever they are, I hope they're doing okay. I hope that Trisha Paytas masked deleting videos is a sign that the offensive troll of the past is truly a person or character of the past. And if there's anything that researching for this video has taught me, it's that we are all capable of growth and change, and that nothing is ever truly permanent. And whether that's good or bad, I'll never know. But I also hope that Trisha Paytas is one of a kind, and that more people like them don't continue to resurface, because I do think it's important to stand for something, to have morals, and to try and make a positive impact, especially when you have a large following because if you stand for nothing you can fall for anything and that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching especially if you made it all to the end if you made it to the end then comment down below chicken nugget and let's confuse a lot of people who haven't watched to this point point. and i hope you guys are all doing well and i'll see you in the next video bye